Chapter 2 What is Kundalini? Everybody should know something about Kundalini, as it represents the coming consciousness of mankind. Kundalini is the name of a sleeping, dormant potential force in the human organism, and it is situated at the root of the spinal column. In the masculine body, it is in the perineum, between the urinary and excretory organs. In the female body, its location is at the root of the uterus, in the cervix. This center is known as Muladhara Chakra, and it is actually a physical structure. It is a small gland, which you can even take out and press. However, Kundalini is a dormant energy, and even if you press it, it will not explode like a bomb. To awaken Kundalini, you must prepare yourself through yogic techniques. You must practice asanas, pranayama, kriya yoga and meditation. Then, when you are able to force your prana into the seat of Kundalini, the energy wakes up and makes its way through Sushumna Nadi, the central nervous canal, to the brain. As Kundalini ascends, it passes through each of the chakras which are interconnected with the different silent areas of the brain. With the awakening of Kundalini, there is an explosion in the brain as the dormant or sleeping areas starts blossoming like flowers. Therefore, Kundalini can be equated with the awakening of the silent areas of the brain. Although Kundalini is said to reside in Muladhara Chakra, we are all at different stages of evolution. And in some of us, Kundalini may have already reached Svadhisthana, Manipura or Anahata Chakra. If this is so, whatever sadhana you do now might start an awakening in Anahata or some other chakra. However, awakening of Kundalini in Muladhara Chakra is one thing, and awakening in Sahasrara, the highest center of the brain, is another. Once the multi-petaled lotus of Sahasrara blossoms, a new consciousness dawns. Our present consciousness is not independent, as the mind depends on the information supplied by the senses. If you have no eyes, you can never see. If you are deaf, you will never hear. However, when the superconsciousness emerges, experience becomes completely independent and knowledge also becomes completely independent. How man discovered Kundalini? Right from the beginning of creation, Man witnessed many transcendental happenings. Sometimes he was able to read the thoughts of others. He witnessed somebody else's predictions coming true. Or he may even have seen his own dreams manifesting into realities. He pondered over the fact that some people could write inspiring poems or compose beautiful music, whereas others couldn't. One person could fight on the battlefield for days together and another person couldn't even get up from his bed. So he wanted to discover why everybody seemed to be different. In the course of his investigations, man came to understand that within every individual there is a special form of energy. He saw that in some people it was dormant, in others it was evolving and in a very small minority of people it was actually awakened. Originally, man named this energy after gods, goddesses, angels or divinities. 
Then he discovered prana and called it prana shakti. In Tantra they called it Kundalini. What the various names for Kundalini mean? In Sanskrit Kundo means a coil and so Kundalini has been described as that which is coiled. This is the traditional belief, but it has been incorrectly understood. The word Kundalini actually comes from the word Kunda, meaning a deeper place, pit or cavity. The fire used in the ceremony of initiation is kindled in a pit called Kunda. Similarly, the place where a dead body is burned is Kunda. If you dig a ditch or a hole, it is called Kunda. Kunda refers to the concave cavity in which the brain, resembling a coiled and sleeping serpent, nestles. If you have the opportunity of examining a dissection of the human brain, you will see that it is in the form of a coil or snake curled up upon itself. This is the true meaning of Kundalini. The word Kundalini refers to the Shakti or power when it is in its dormant potential state. But when it is manifesting, you can call it Devi, Kali, Durga, Saraswati, Lakshmi or any other name according to the manifestation it is exhibiting before you. In the Christian tradition the terms the path of the initiates and the stairway to heaven used in the Bible refer to Kundalini's ascent through Sushumna Nadi. The ascent of Kundalini and ultimately the descent of spiritual grace are symbolized by the cross. This is why Christians make the sign of the cross at Agya, Anahata and Vishuddhi chakras. For Agya is the center where the ascending consciousness is transcended and Anahata is where the descending grace is made manifest to the world. Whatever happens in spiritual life, it is related to the awakening of Kundalini. And the goal of every form of spiritual life, whether you call it Samadhi, Nirvana, Moksha, Communion, Union, Kaivalya, Liberation or whatever, is in fact awakening of Kundalini. Kundalini, Kali and Durga. When Kundalini has just awakened and you are not able to handle it, it is called Kali. When you can handle it and are able to use it for beneficial purposes and you become powerful on account of it, it is called Durga. Kali is a female deity, naked, black or smoky in color, wearing a mala of 108 human skulls, representing the memories of different births. Kali's lolling tongue of blood red color signifies the Rajaguna, whose circular movement gives impetus to all creative activities. By this specific gesture, she is exhorting the sadhakas to control their Rajaguna, the sacrificial sword and the severed head held by the left hand are the symbols of disillusion. Darkness and death are by no means the mere absence of light and life, rather they are their origin. The sadhaka worships the cosmic power in its female form, for she represents the kinetic aspect, the masculine being, the static which is activated only through her power. In Hindu mythology, the awakening of Kali has been described in great detail. When Kali rises in red anger, all the gods and demons are stunned and everybody keeps quiet. They do not know what she is going to do. 
they ask Lord Shiva to pacify her. But Kali roars ferociously, throwing him down and standing on his chest with her mouth wide open, thirsty for flesh and blood. When the devas hold prayers to pacify Kali, she becomes calm and quiet. Then there is the emergence of Durga, the higher, more refined and benign symbol of the unconscious. Durga is a beautiful goddess, seated on a tiger. She has eight hands representing the eightfold elements of man. Durga wears a mala of human heads to symbolize her wisdom and power. These heads are generally 52 in number, representing the 52 letters of the Sanskrit alphabet, which are the outer manifestations of Shabda Brahma, or Brahma in the form of sound. Durga is the remover of all evil consequences of life and the giver of power and peace that is released from Muladhara. According to yoga philosophy, Kali, the first manifestation of the unconscious Kundalini, is a terrible power. It completely subdues the individual soul, represented by her standing on Lord Shiva. It sometimes happens that by mental instability some people get in contact with their unconscious body and see inauspicious, ferocious elements, ghosts, monsters, etc. When Kali, the unconscious power of man, is awakened, she goes up to meet the further manifestation, being Durga, the superconscious, bestowing glory and beauty. Symbolic representation of Kundalini In the Tantric texts, Kundalini is conceived of as the primal power or energy. In terms of modern psychology, it can be called the unconscious in man. As we have just discussed, in Hindu mythology, Kundalini corresponds with the concept of Kali. The philosophy of Shaivism, the concept of Kundalini is represented by the Shiva Lingam, the oval-shaped stone or pillar with a snake coiled around it. However, most commonly, Kundalini is illustrated as a sleeping serpent, coiled three and a half times. Of course, there is no serpent residing in Muladhara, Sahasrara or any other chakra, but the serpent has always been a symbol for efficient consciousness. In all the oldest mystic cults of the world, you will find the serpent, and if you have seen any pictures or images of Lord Shiva, you will have noticed serpents girdling his waist, neck and arms. Kali is also adorned with serpents, and Lord Vishnu eternally reposes on a large coiled serpent. This serpent power symbolizes the unconscious in man. In Scandinavian, European, Latin American and Middle Eastern countries and many different civilizations of the world, the concept of the serpent power is represented in monuments and ancient artifacts. This means Kundalini was known to people from all parts of the world in the past. However, we can conceive Kundalini in any manner we like because actually prana has no form or dimension, it is infinite. In the traditional descriptions of Kundalini awakening, it is said that Kundalini resides in Muladhara in the form of a coiled snake, and when the snake awakens, it uncoils and shoots up through Sushumna, the psychic passage in the center of the spinal cord, opening the other chakras as it goes. These are John's Woodruff's The Serpent Power. Brahmachari Swami Vyasdev, in his book Science of the Soul, describes the awakening of Kundalini in the following way. 
Sadakas have seen the Sushumna in the form of a luminous rod or pillar, a golden yellow snake, or sometimes as a shining black snake, about 10 inches long with blood red eyes like smoldering charcoal. The front part of the tongue vibrating and shining like lightning, ascending the spinal column. The meaning of the three and a half coils of the serpent is as follows. The three coils represent the three mantras of Om, which relate to the past, present and future, to the three gunas, tamas, rajas and sattva, to the three states of consciousness, waking, sleeping and dreaming, and to the three types of experience, subjective experience, sensual experience, and absence of experience. The half of the coil represents the state of transcendence, where there is neither waking, sleeping, nor dreaming. So the three and a half coils signify the total experience of the universe and the experience of transcendence. Who can awaken Kundalini? There are many people who have awakened their Kundalini. Not only saints and sadhus, but poets, painters, warriors, writers. Anyone can awaken their Kundalini. With the awakening of Kundalini, not only visions of God take place, there is dawning of creative intelligence and an awakening of supramental faculties. By activating Kundalini, you may become anything in life. The energy of Kundalini is one energy, but it expresses itself differently through the individual psychic centers or chakras, first in gross instinctive ways and then in progressively more subtle ways. Refining of the expression of this energy at higher and more subtle levels of vibration represents the ascent of human consciousness to its highest possibilities. Kundalini is the creative energy. It is the energy of self-expression. Just as in reproduction a new life is created, in the same way someone like Einstein uses that same energy in a different, more subtle realm to create a theory like relativity. It is the same energy that is expressed when someone composes or plays beautiful music. It is the same energy which is expressed in all parts of life, whether it is building up a business, fulfilling the family duties, or reaching whatever goal you aspire for. These are all expressions of the same creative energy. Everybody, whether householder or sannyasi, must remember that awakening of Kundalini is the prime purpose of human incarnation. All the pleasures of sensual life which we are enjoying now are intended only to enhance the awakening of Kundalini amidst the adverse circumstances of man's life. A process of metamorphosis With the awakening of Kundalini, a transformation takes place in life. It has little to do with one's moral, religious or ethical life. It has more to do with the quality of our experiences and perceptions. When Kundalini wakes up, your mind changes and your priorities and attachments also change. All your karmas undergo a process of integration. It is very simple to understand. When you were a child you loved toys, but why don't you love them now? Because your mind has changed and consequently your attachments have also changed. 
So with the awakening of Kundalini, a metamorphosis takes place. There is even the possibility of restructuring the entire physical body. When Kundalini awakens, the physical body actually undergoes many changes. Generally, they are positive. But if your guru is not cautious, they can be negative also. When the Shakti wakes up, the cells in the body are completely charged and the process of rejuvenation also starts. The voice changes, the smell of the body changes, and the hormonal secretions also change. In fact, the transformation of cells in the body and brain takes place at a much higher rate than normal. These are just a few observations. However, scientific researchers are still taking their first steps into this field. Why awaken Kundalini? If you want to take up the practice of Kundalini Yoga, the most important thing is that you have a reason or an aim. If you want to awaken Kundalini for psychic powers, then please go ahead with your own destiny. But if you want to awaken Kundalini in order to enjoy communion between Shiva and Shakti, the actual communion between the two great forces within you, if you want to enter Samadhi and experience the Absolute in the cosmos, and if you want to understand the truth behind the appearance, and if the purpose of your pilgrimage is very great, then there is nothing that can come to you as an obstacle. By means of Kundalini awakening, you are compensating with the laws of nature and speeding up the pace of your physical, mental and spiritual evolution. Once the great Shakti awakens, man is no longer a gross physical body operating with a lower mind and low voltage prana. Instead, every cell of his body is charged with the high voltage prana of Kundalini. And when total awakening occurs, man becomes a junior god, an embodiment of divinity.